There turned out to be a lot of new support heroes in Dragonair Silent Gods Season 4. Welcome to Part 3 of 3, where I go through and break down all the different supports depending on their affinity. First off, we did Lightning, Frost, and Poison. Then, the last video, we did all the Necrosis. Today is going to be Radiance and Fire to wrap this thing up. We've got two of each, so let's head into the gallery and let's talk about our two new Fire supports in Season 4 of Dragonair Silent Gods and our two new Radiant supports in Season 4, Dragonair, Silent Gods. Guys, I know the game is not going much longer in America. I know it all too well. But if you live anywhere else, the game is still absolutely chugging along. So if you want to play, the link will be in the description and the top pinned comment. As well, it is available on PC, mobile, Epic Games, and Steam. Let's get into it. Fastidious. Fastidious. Alrighty guys, I know the last one was kind of long, so I'm gonna try to make it a little bit faster. I realized I can just use the filters. They've got a great gallery in this game. It's gonna make it a lot easier for me to find these new heroes. So let's start with our Radiance heroes. This is where our one legendary remaining can be found, and that is Yafir. I'll be honest, all in all, I have been kind of pretty darn flippin' disappointed when it comes to the new supports and the tanks, what we've covered in this three-parter for season four. The only one that really blew me away was Moshtor. A hero I'll very likely never get, but Moshtor. You know, this is a beautiful hero. Can Yafir live up to that bar, that high support tank bar that Moshtor set? Yafir, you're on the clock, big boy. What do you got for me? The guy loves butterflies. So we've We've known that for a long time. Let's go to the captain skill here. A crit damage aura, Grand Gladiator Arena. If you've watched a lot of these, the ones that are so obviously pointed towards PvP stuff and Grand Gladiator Arena specifically, they're 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 rarely my favorites. But he can maybe he can still impress me. Crit damage aura makes me think we've got a DPS kind of if not a DPS himself. You know, sometimes sometimes in Dragonair it says support, but they still deal some big damage. If not, maybe he's a beautiful buffer or support hero alongside your DPSers. So, you fear, please deliver. See me not. For every 15 times of damage dealt or taken by the hero and his clones, who the boy got clones? They will enter an undispellable, undispellable, what a word, invisibility for three seconds. A clone will be summoned at the same time. As the battle starts, gains invisibility and summons a clone, up to five clones, on the battlefield at the same time. This is confusing as heck. For every 15 times damage is dealt or is taken, so anytime he's dealing or receiving, he likes to do both, His him or his clones, you get an invisibility state that's undispelled for three seconds. When that happens, simultaneously a clone pops up. There's also a clone that pops up at the start of battle. So you start out with your fear and a clone. I'm explaining this to myself, guys. We're going in blind here. We always do on these breakdowns. It comes to the battle, it's your fear and a clone. If one of them gets hit or does a hit, if it happens combined 15 times, all those two things, Yafir and his clone, dealing, receiving, whenever that finally happens, we get an invisible state for, for the clone, Yafir, or the clones potentially, for, as, for up to three seconds, and then you get another clone. Boom. And this can happen up to five clones, so four additional ones after uh, after the, the initial one comes. It says at the same time, so I'm wondering if these clones can die. I'm assuming they can? I don't know. Let's find out more about it. Omnipresent me, we've got a taunt that's gonna come, we got the details up, places a clone near the enemy with the highest attack, deals 300% attack, radiant damage to nearby enemies with the clone as the center. So it's it's some kind of AOE radiating off the clone. You can see it's like a square around the clone. I assume that the center tile of this square is gonna be the one in which the clone is. I'm actually gonna move myself so you guys can see slightly better. There's a 100% chance to inflict taunt, so they're all gonna attack the clone. They're not getting into it, so I'm assuming, because they they never broke it down here. They never broke it down here, obviously. Are they gonna break it down here? Of course not. Right, I'm assuming the clone has all of his stats, so when the clone dies, uh, it's taking all the damage, distracting them. So far, seems immensely powerful. I think we can all agree on that. He's just throwing clones back there that are kind of just punching bags to distract the enemies with this taunt. 100% taunt here. The damage can go up to 315%. Uh, it's solid. Um, stuff's pretty typical here. Initial recharge at four seconds, and then the base tend to start uh, eight with skill ups. Let's go to the ultimate now. I'm assuming it's going to be convoluted as, as all heck. Witness true power. 
It's got that nice diamond you see that gets put in front of the hero's tile in Dragonair, jumps to the target area and deals 640% attack, radiant damage to enemies within range with a 75% chance to inflict attack penalty too. I'm sure this goes up to 100% chance with skill ups. It does. Also, we should say the damage goes up to 650%. Sick. I mean, what a lame bump. It goes from 640 to 650. It's going up by like less than 2%. Uh, who, 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 who cares? Uh, meanwhile, the hero ta gains attack speed up two for 10 seconds, enhances the basic attacks for 12 seconds. In this period, basic attacks deal 75% attack. I'm assuming this also will get pushed, I guess, to 85%. Radiant damage to the enemy twice and heals the hero and all clones by 5% of max HP. So it's, it's, it is what it is. I mean, he's doing some, some decent, a decent target range, a bit of an AOE. It's not that strong. Uh, it's not that weak. It's, it kind of is what it is, but he also has some self-healing to keep him going so he can keep making clones. He can keep his, he can heal his clones so they can keep going, keep uptime on the five max clones. I think if he's spamming out enough clones, this is, this is really good. What I do wonder, what are the clones doing besides when he, he places them with battle skill? Are they just doing his basic attacks? Uh, are they just there to, as distractions? It's not perfectly clear to me. Um, if you guys want, I mean, we're running out of time here on, on me exploring season four of, of Dragonair Silent Gods. I could go test you fear. I mean, this is the weirdest, probably the weirdest kit I've read in the game. Let me know what you guys think in the comments if you're with me. Uh, definitely not bad. Definitely not Mosh Tour, but definitely not bad. I think this guy just made his way onto the thumbnail. Let's take a little screen grab of this guy. Come on, Butterfly Boy. Let's go now. All right, who's it going to be next? That's our one legendary we have to cover today. Very interesting, Butterfly Clone Boy. That's what we'll call him uh, forever, Odd Infinitum. Uh, who is it going to be? We have got Ashkar. Oh, no, but we shouldn't do Ashkar because I believe he is one of the fires. I want to do the fires last. So we've got Tarula. Uh, so this is the theme of season four. Everybody is a cat person. The American audience couldn't handle it, so they had to move to other... I'm no, just kidding. But yeah, along come all these big cat kind of anamorph hybrid anthropomorphized is that the word uh enchanting blade tarula she's a support she's got blade in the name i hope there's some dps here uh she's got weird cat boobies honestly not a fan of this one already this design is kind of wacky uh let's go to the passive another mug when, su when successfully dispelling any debuff heals the ally with the current lowest percentage of hp she's a she's a good healer 10% target max HP with a multiplier of enlightenment. So she's an enlightenment hero. Makes me think of one of my OGs, Hexandra, right? Who's an attack based healer, but did a lot of stuff based on her enlightenment. So we're seeing a similar thing here. I'm hoping that's a lot stronger. We got an epic on our hands. Fluttering Peplum, a square all around her. Deals 320% attack, radiant damage to enemies within range. Uh, I wonder if she kind of goes into the back lines. This is an interesting range here. Certainly she'll at least be frontlined. Uh, I guess they would say more explicitly if she went around and went to like hit the DPS in the back, but certainly she's going to go march forward as like a melee unit. Uh, so enemies within range, 100% chance to dispel one buff from them. Are you joking, man? Are you having, I mean, are you serious? Just attack based damage, nothing support here except for a single buff dispel, single target damage. Monstrous L on the battle skill. Come on, please, Trula. I need a great hero. Come on, make this ultimate brilliant. Dispels all debuffs from the ally with the highest attack and grants them debuff immunity and control immunity. So, so this is kind of, this is a cool support ability. So it's strictly just helping one ally, but it's probably going to be your main DPS because it's the ally with the highest attack. You can control for this with how you build your heroes. Full dispel of all the debuffs, so cleansing it all off, giving a debuff immunity, nice little buff, and a control immunity. Is it so special? No, but it is a nice cleanse, a nice support skill. Is it going to help? Yes. Do I think a lot of people will use this hero? No. End of end of statement. I'm not into Tarula. Let's hope the fire ones can, can help us a bit more because this was rough. All the way to the top now. Up first is going to be Ashkar. Little Arabian Nights vibe. Uh, very, very cool kind of thing here. Another tiger boy. This is this is the, the theme, right? Fervent Gift Ashkar. He's a support. Captain skill. We got an all battles aura. Increases all allies attack by 24%. I do like it. When the hero tries to inflict debuffs or control effects to the enemies, yet the effects are resisted or invalidated, the hero instead gains 15% max HP healing and has a 100% chance to inflict fear on nearby enemies. Man, I don't know. Because the, 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 the heal is cool, right? 
and there's a typo between the, the bracket and the H, but that's a story for another day. But he's trying to inflict a debuff or a control effect, and it's either resisted or invalidated. That makes me think we didn't have enough attack and it got resisted. Are we going to go inflict this fear for three seconds and that is also resisted? I was I would hope this would say in, un, in a, a fear that cannot be resisted, you know, so I don't know. I feel like if if you're already getting resisted, this is probably going to get resisted, too, unless I'm missing something, which I don't think I am. Let's go to the battle skill Intimidate. Cool name. Deals 300% attack fire damage to the target and nearby enemies with a 75% chance to inflict a recharging speed penalty on them for 5 seconds after dealing damage if the enemy's HP is lower than 60%, 60% additionally reduces their ultimate energy by 20%. And I don't know. The conditions are there. I mean, it's... it's mm, the range is kind of cool. The, the multipliers are bad, but I mean, they're not terrible. 100% chance to get the recharge speed penalty. If you can get him hitting hard enough or time this out, which I don't, it'd be hard to do with the battle skill, but you know, you can have all those amazing auto settings. If you know they're going to have less than 60, uh, the ultimate energy reduction is really good. Feels like it has use in PvP. Not 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 a uh, world breaking, but there is a nice AoE quality to this if you have your, your targets, your enemies bunched up. Let's go now to the ultimate. Flagrant Taunt, 600% attack plus 10% max HP fire. So uh, based on HP and attack, fire damage to enemies within range. Again, a nice little square in front of him. 100% chance, I presume, yes, with skill ups to do a taunt. <laughs> an amazing additional 10% damage. So again, an increase of less than 2%. Why? Uh, when successfully inflicting taunt on them, there's a 100% chance to inflict attack penalty too. We love that. Uh, that is, a, and this is, he's like fine. He's just an epic, right? But like, he's totally fine. No real issue here. He actually doesn't look that cool, so I didn't expect too much. He he looks like an epic, doesn't he? Honestly, does he look like a rare even? I mean, kind of does, I think. Uh, all in all, fine, fine. Nice big attack penalty too, but that, that debuff is very, very available in this game. A lot of heroes are able to do it. The taunt is nice. I mean, mm, no, not blown away. It all comes down to you. Alistair, who I literally thought was a legendary when I saw him. I mean, looking at it now, I guess I can see that he's a rare, but a very unique kind of setup. He's in kind of, what would you call this? Like a jester's outfit? This very, like, I don't know, kind of flamboyant medieval look, almost circusy as well. I don't know. I thought I thought he looked really cool. So I'm expecting something special. He was the first hero from season four I saw. So let's see what that kid actually looks like. Practice makes perfect. When inflicting debuffs or control to enemies, the hero reduces their ultimate energy by 15%. When their ultimate energy is reduced to zero by this effect, the hero obtains an extra 20% 20, 20 ultimate energy himself. Energy. <laughs> ultimate energy. <laughs> I want to make sure I'm not blogging that. Ultimate energy. I'm, I'm happy I'm not the only person out here making typos. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is really good, right? I'm assuming, I'm hoping there's a lot of debuffs and control in this kit. If you can get him flying around, you get him spanning, you get him cycling. I mean, you could be, you know, extra cycling the ultimate with that 20% ultimate energy uh, and really bringing them down. I mean, I I really like this potentially. Now we got a stun. So here's our control effect. Strikes an enemy twice, each dealing 220% attack, fire damage. Second attack is a 75% chance with skill ups up to 100% chance of inflicting stun. So basically that's one instance. That's one instance of a control effect so far. So that would be a 15% ultimate energy drop now this one's energy it's only for us it's the ultimate energy uh, let's go to the ultimate now is it aoe please be aoe yes all enemies within range 720 percent attack fire damage now we have some decent multipliers and this goes up to 730 percent 100 percent chance with skill ups to inflict recharging penalty on them for 10 seconds so this is an aoe debuff placement i was hoping to see tons of debuffs and tons of crowd control effects that really take great advantage of this that being said i mean this could hit like four or five people, right? So for each one of those, when you have that 100% chance, you build them with a lot of accuracy, you should be talking uh, about, what is this? You know, uh, that's, I guess they're all, I guess it doesn't stack, but they're all getting that 15% ultimate energy reduction. If you get all of them down to zero, you can just spam it right again. Uh, there'd be another 20% for each, right? Of your ultimate energy. Pretty good. Uh, not, not, I mean, for a rare, very solid. Uh, this is a very interesting range. I'd have to see how it works. I'm guessing, I'm guessing he's kind of a melee unit. Hard to say without testing. If you guys want to see me test any of these guys, 
please let me know. That's going to be Alistair, and that's going to be that's going to be the end of our series on all the season four supports in Dragonair. Silent Gods, guys, I'm sorry it's not available in America right now, but if you're playing anywhere else or you're at least interested, I will have the link in the description and the top pinned comment. The game is available on Steam, on Epic, PC, and Mobile. Again, if you're outside of the States, I highly suggest you check it out. I've been Facetious. We have one more video in the series covering the Epic Damage Dealers. Look forward to that. Share with your mother, subscribe, comments, notification bell, thumbs up, all that good stuff. See you real soon. Bye. Fast idiots.